Hey, thank you for joining me on Rethink with Reed. I'm Reed Kilmer. Today's interview is going to cover someone who trains to be a triathlete and has a career as a news reporter. You're going to hear her life story, a little bit about what she does to become successful and how she thinks people can set their mind up to be successful for themselves, whether that be in their career, training to do different types of things and overcoming obstacles. So stay with us and let me know what you think at the end of the interview. Thanks. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Uh, I wanted to talk to you and share people, have them, have you share your story with them. And uh, for people who don't know you, would you share a little bit about yourself, about some of your hobbies, be a dog mom, whatever you like? Yes. Okay. So I live here in Omaha. Obviously, I'm in the Midtown area. Um, I am a TV reporter for KETV News Watch 7. I've been there for just a little over two years now. Um, I'm a dog mom. That is a big part of my life. Um, have a little husky German Shepherd mix we got from the Humane Society. His name's Oso. Um, I'm married. Um, my husband's name is Johnny, and we both really enjoy running and doing outdoorsy things. We're both really competitive, so we're signing up for races. Um, I recently got into triathlons about a year and a half ago. So that's been my newest. I feel like I'm always finding something else to like fixate on. Mm -hmm. And right now it's triathlon. So I got all the gear, I got a bike, I got, so I'm like all in. And that's part of why I wanted to share your stories because A, I think you're an extraordinary human being. Not only that you're super nice, but you're so determined in your professional life and your personal life. So you're a local TV news reporter and that's a really tough job that I feel like a lot of people don't realize to see the 90 seconds that you're on there that they even know to, to hours to put together. So to start off, tell me a little bit about what it's like to be a reporter in today's age where media companies, their credibility is constantly being questioned and you have to talk to different kinds of people. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough job and I feel like in the last year it's gotten a lot tougher um, with certain, you know, the political atmosphere that's out there right now. Um, and social media, there's so many things flying around on social media all the time that I think it's hard for people differentiate, to differentiate between what's legitimate and what's just a rumor. You know, you hear the term fake news all the time. I mean, it's, it's tough and people literally, they don't know where that line is sometimes. And that's kind of sad, but, um, it's a tough job for sure. I mean, you, you know what it's like. It's, it's, you're grinding. You kind of walk in the door. You don't know what you're going to get. You know, some days you could be set up with something. Other days you could be running around all day, breaking news here, send you out of town. Um, so I always, I think it's kind of funny. I tell people, um, I'm kind of a low maintenance person. I'm kind of a tomboy. So that both works in my favor and against me when it comes to news, because you know, you're out there, you're in the field, you know, it could be super hot, it could be super cold, but then you have to do your hair, do your makeup, you know, get ready for those 90 seconds that you're on the air, which I, I hate doing, but everything else I love about it, so. Yeah. And then you're training for to be a track lead at the same time. Yes. Yep. So you kind of have to balance that. Um, sometimes it's early mornings, waking up before work, getting a workout in, going to work. Sometimes you get home, get another workout in if you can, eat and go to bed. And that's it. <laughs> that's your life. So I'm probably pretty lame to most of my friends. They're always making fun of me like, we're going to go out and do this Friday night. And I have to tell them I've got a race in the morning or I'm waking up to go run 15 miles or whatever. I mean, I don't know, but I love it, so it's. I think it's super fulfilling. So what does it take to be a triathlete? What kind of training are you doing to just prepare for that one race? Well, um, right now it's kind of the transition. So in the winter time, um, I'm kind of just getting my base back in order. So I'm getting back in the pool, getting back on the bike. Um, but then once spring rolls around, it'll be, I want, I need to make sure I'm swimming, biking and running three times a week, at least every week. Um, doing strength training twice a week if I can on top of that. So. Oh, that just like, <laughs> I'm just sitting there trying to piece together. I'm like, well, I can put that, that one day, but I wouldn't want to do it the next day. So I know. So some days you have to do, like I said, you have to put in a, a two workout day and, but that, I mean, and my problem, I don't know if it's a problem, but like I'm competitive. And so if I'm, if I'm doing it, I got to do it all the way. So I'm going to do everything I can to, to be competitive in my age group, to try to win races if I can, because that's just who I am. 
<laughs> I can't change that. <laughs> and how many miles is it per part of the race? Per part? Well, it depends on the triathlon. So they've got sprint, Olympic, half Ironman, and full Ironman distances. So I'll start with the big one and work my way down. Mm. The full Ironman is 2.4 miles of swimming, 112 miles of biking, and then a full marathon run, 26.2. So that's like full crazy. You are insane. <laughs> that's like you train for a straight year to get ready for something like oh. that. Everything else kind of halves its way down. So a half Ironman is half all of that. Mm. Olympic distance is pretty much half that. And then a sprint is not quite half, but a lot shorter. So, and where yeah. do you want to be in that spectrum in this upcoming year? Um, last year I did, um, a half Ironman. I really like that distance. Mm -hmm. So I think this next year I will be doing a couple more of those. Um, but it's really fun locally. There's a lot more sprint and Olympic distance triathlons that are offered, um, around the country. So I'll definitely be sprinkling in those as well. Nice, nice. So what drives you to be this successful and want this kind of thing in your professional and personal life? I, I think I'm just a type A personality. It must be the way I was raised or the way I was born. I've always like, I mean, growing up, going to school, I was always the kid that like needed to get straight A's. I was always the kid that wanted to be involved in everything that I could. That's just like who I am. <laughs> um, but I just think there's a lot of fulfillment that comes from, um, creating goals and then reaching them. That just for me is I, nothing can top that in terms of how good it feels. So that's what continues to drive me is, okay, I got this done. Well, what can I do next time? Can I do even better next time? So are these types of things that your parents set up for you as a kid when you were growing up or is this something you've developed as um, I think both. I think they were both very um, encouraging when it came to getting involved in things, um, sports, theater, choir, all that stuff. They were always very supportive. And um, But again, I think it's just a personality thing. And um, both my parents were pretty competitive as well, especially my dad. He's the one that got me into running. I remember as a little kid, he would go on his runs because he trained for marathons and stuff, and I'd be on my bike next to him. And then eventually when I got old enough, I'd start running next to him. And then uh, finally getting to the point where he was actually struggling to keep up with me, it was just kind of like weird to see how that progressed. But yeah, I owe a lot of my um, athletic competition to my dad for sure interesting and then you go and marry a man who's a big time runner johnny yes. Hannon, i thought it was psycho when it was first hearing about his training yeah how much do you think his dedication helps you and keeps you consistently going after these goals for sure i think that's huge i think um a we understand that drive so there's not like a confusion or there's not like a well, why aren't you wanting to go do this to do your run instead? Well, why do you, why is this so important to you? He just, we both understand that. So it works really well. Um, and B, we just push each other. I mean, he's, he helps me because he is such an amazing runner. He's an elite runner, um, part of the Lincoln running company team. So he helped me form my marathon plan and he's great. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go support each other at our races and, I'm trying to talk him into doing triathlons, but he hasn't gotten there yet. But um, no, it's it's great. It definitely helps for sure that we both have that similar interest. So what inspires you to keep doing this consistently now? Um, I think it's a combination of things. The competition is a big part of it. I really like doing something where I'm actually... A, competing against my own time. I want to see that time continue to improve. Um, I also like competing next to other people because that just pushes you during the race as I want to, you know, get across the finish line before this person does. Um, but it's also the health aspect. I mean, it's, a, it's just a great way to keep fit. It keeps you focused. If you're training for something, if you've signed up for something, you can't falter because if you don't do it, if you're not dedicated, you're going to have a terrible race day. And I've been there. It's not worth it. So you have to put in the work and it kind of keeps you consistent, keeps you disciplined um, when you're training for something. Interesting. So if somebody were to watch this and kind of wanted to know what they could learn from you or what's something that you would want to pass to them that could keep them going, whether it be in the professional life or the personal life, 
what's what's a motto or something that you keep telling yourself to, that you could pass on? I think um, what's so great about endurance sports, especially since I got into triathlon, is this opportunity to show people or tell people you are capable of so much more than you think you are. Um, and a lot of people don't try something because, you know, they think it's too hard or it might be painful or, you know, I can't run a marathon. That's ridiculous. But you can, though. Like, you can. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is, is when... I talk to people about fitness or, or anything like that. I tell them, well, what do you want to do? Set a goal. Even if it's way up here, like go for it. You know what I mean? You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So I think that's what I try to tell people. Very cool. Uh, anything that you would like to add or that you'd like to share about yourself? Um, I really like cheese and also chocolate and also mostly all of the things that are really bad for you, which is reason 3,482 that I do all these triathlons and races <laughs> and things like that. I love eating. Um, so are those uh, still on the diet and training or did oh, they get burned off? Oh, read. Yeah, no, it's, and I need to be better about it. That's one of the things I'm trying to work on mm -hmm. for next year for sure is to be a little bit more strict because nutrition is huge and I know it would make a big difference. Um, I try to eat healthy. Um, you know, I try to get my vegetables and fruits in for sure. But I mean, if there's a piece of cake on the table, I'm going for it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So lastly, uh, Camille's goal for 2018, what is it going to be this comes time next year? I want to, are we talking about triathlon or like what, any, anything? Whatever you, yeah. Whatever you think. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Well, like in the sports athletic world, um, I want to get faster. I want to work on my speed. I want to work specifically on my biking time. I need to get that split faster. So that's one of my big goals for 2018. Um, Life goals, though, that's hard. That's a hard question, yeah. Reed. <laughs> Life goals. Um, do, you see, do you see yourself in the news industry going forward and continuing to push yourself? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I love where I'm at right now, but I definitely think in the future I'd love to kind of jump to a bigger market if I can, mm -hmm. continue to report, possibly work toward anchoring at some point in the future, definitely. And I think Johnny and I don't want to live in Nebraska our whole lives. We're hoping to go somewhere and experience some other states. So yeah, working toward that. Very cool. Well, Kula, thank you very much and I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the interview, please subscribe, leave some feedback in the comments below. And if there's a topic you want me to cover or somebody that you'd like me to interview, just contact me and we'll see what we can do. Thanks.